पहले मिनिस्टर वाले था ओम श्री गुरु हरि ओम श्रुतिस्मृति ुखम There is an important question about the earlier verse, where we have said, "Jnana vajita, jnana hi na chit jnana." That is the statement. Means the knowing element, the knowingness, is free from um, knowledge, cognitive knowledge, as well as ignorance. <coughs> Now a question comes: uh, the knowing element, the knowingness. Does it know itself or not? Okay. So it is answered in a way: Nyatum kim antaram asti. To know, there must be division. Hence, there is no division in it, and hence the very idea of knowing doesn't apply. That is the Vedantic standpoint. So here uh, there are two schools. One is the Buddhist school, another is the Vedantic vision. So in the Buddhist school, um, the Vijnana, the knowing element, for them the knowing element is not Atma. The knowing element is mind. But still the same question comes there. It is the mind which illuminates the world. But uh, what about the mind? Does it illuminate itself? Does it know itself? It is called vijnana because it knows everything else. But does it know itself? They say yes. They have a phrase for it: swasamvedyatvam vijnanasya. So in their thesis, vijnana knows everything else and also knows itself. Swasamvedya. So that means, with reference to everything else, it is subject. And with reference to itself, it is subject as well as the object, because it is knowing itself. This principle of uh, the same thing being the subject as well as object, uh, so it is called reflexivity, I think, in philosophy. And uh, in Vedanta, it is considered a contradiction, and the contradiction also got a name, Kartru Karma Vidhotha. So they don't accept it. Shankara doesn't accept it. Shankara considers the considered this issue in detail in Prashna Prasad Bhashyam and dismisses it. In fact, the Swasamvedya Brahm, the Vijnana, is known to itself. I put it in the active voice. Vijnana knows itself. The Swasamvedya Brahm is entirely a Buddhist concept, and it was dismissed by Shankara. And uh, the reason for dismissal is. Uh, When you say the vijnana knows itself, replace vijnana with atma. When you say atma knows itself, then uh, of course it, is, it knows itself. It knows that is subject, but itself it is the object. That means you have introduced an element of objectivity into atma, which is not accessible. And also, if you look closely. If you, uh, so Atma it doesn't know itself; it just shines. It just shines. So take a lamp. The lamp it illuminates everything, but what about itself? It doesn't illuminate itself. That is not the way to look at it. It just shines. And therefore, because it is shining, it doesn't require any illumination, either by itself or by something else. Therefore, Atma. This is what Shankara says. Swayam Prakasha. That is what Atma. Like sun, 
sun shines, the sun doesn't illuminate itself. It's only a point of view. You can argue both ways. But the point is there should not be even an iota of objectivity, which is called in Sanskrit idanta, thisness, should be, should be, is not allowed, should not be there in the Atma. It is not, it is, it doesn't know itself. It is knowingness itself and therefore it doesn't require any know, any know, any illumination, either from itself, either by itself or by something else. That is the Vedantic position. So we have clear that. Now we are looking at Atma Darshane. Maybe the Vakya here. Atma Darshane means Sattami. Atma Darshane Sati. So once you realize the self, so how do you realize self? Okay, that is the way to realize self. Kinsvarupam. That is the way to proceed. So, so, because if you look at the lives of people, body is taken as self, indriyas are taken as self, the ego is also taken as the self, of course the mind, intellect are taken as the self. So, so many things are being taken as the self. When you say I am walking, the legs are taken as the self, karmendriyas. When you say I am listening, the jnana indriya is taken as the self. When you say I am thinking, the mind is taken as the self. So like this, uh, when you say I am happy, it is the ego which is taken as the self. Unhappy, it is the ego, is taken, the person, which is the ego, that is taken as the self. And when you say I am uh, five feet ten inches, the body is taken as the self. And so this way, so many things are taken as the self by people at the same time. They do not stay with any particular consistent idea of the self. It is shifting uh, from point to point to point within oneself. Therefore, the question, obvious question that one should pursue is, if you are seeking truth, you should raise this question to yourself. What is the essential nature of myself? You should ask that question because uh, you are not consistent, you are taking different things as the self. And so you should raise that question and that is the way you come to know yourself. So you see mostly you imagine yourself to be a person, the ego. Another name for the ego is the person. So under uh, there is Dukkham in life, sorrow. That's why this investigation became necessary. There is no sorrow. Then why should we know what is the self and what is not the self? Let us be happy. Mm -hmm. But there is sorrow. Therefore, well, we are obliged to consider uh, this question, what is my swarup and all that. You see, what you have to understand is, uh, when you raise this question, what am I or who am I, one thing that you can pay attention and come to realize that it is the person which suffers. There is suffering, so it's a fact of life, and uh, the person suffers, not the essential you that you have to recognize. So we are not saying that there is no suffering. To admit there is suffering, sarvam so dukkham, and uh, the suffering is caused by ajnana, ignorance, and uh, who is it that suffers? The person suffers. The egotistic person suffers, not you. That is how you have to conduct this inquiry, kims swarupam. That is the way. So, so then what is my swarupam chitta? Jnana Vartita, Ajnana Hena Chita. That is your Swarupa. Therefore, when you raise this question and examine the person and understand that the suffering belongs to the person, and you are not the person, you are the witness in your awareness. And you understand that when you take the inquiry in the direction, the, the suffering dissolves. 
the person along with the suffering, the person also dissolves. How it dissolves? Why it dissolves? Because the person is merely a bundle of memories. I used to do one illustration. So we have a we have a spindle, you know, spindle. No, no, no. Just uh, take a spindle. Take of a spindle. Spindle is a wine turned round and round. And in between there is nothing. Only spindle. So in between there is a space. That kind of spindle you take. Don't take a spindle where some cotton or some uh, some wooden pieces in the center. Not that because if you take out the twines, uh, the wooden pieces remain. So not that that is not our illustration. The spindle, which doesn't have anything in between, you know such a spindle. Now there is a space inside that spindle. The space appears to be separate from the whole space. Hello. Eh? Why it appears to separate? Because of the twine going round and round and round and forming a cylindrical shape. The twine acquires a cylindrical shape and therefore the space seems to be separated and limited by that uh, twine thing and therefore that space appears to be uh, separate. Now what you do is eh, take out the twine in the opposite direction, take out the twine then finally the last strand of the last cycle of this string is taken out. What remains? Cylindrical space remains? No. So what happens to the cylindrical space? It merges in the Maha space. Therefore, the egotistic person is a product of a bundle of memories, just like a bundle of Five going round and round and it becomes a bundle thereby is trying to separate the space, small space versus big space. Creates a division, which is not real. Similarly, this bundle of memories that I was born, that is where it starts. Date of birth. Date of birth is alright for CVS. But uh, if you take the date of birth to be of yourself, then you are not looking at your Swarupa. You are already identified with the ego distinction. That is the misfortune. Okay? So, in the society, you don't find the inspiration coming from elders in this regard. They don't inspire properly. Because they themselves celebrate birthdays and all that in a big way. Therefore, you don't get inspiration from the popular um, uh, gurus of the world. But uh, if you carefully look, you get the inspiration also. We are looking at Ramana Maharshi. Did you ever notice Ramana Maharshi in his lifetime performing the birthday? Did you ever hear anything like that? So then you should get inspiration. The inspiration should come from the proper source. It should not come from uh, the wrong source. So. A Mahatma may be great in many respects, but if this is not where you should take inspiration. This we should learn to ignore it. And therefore, did you ever hear Nisargadatta Maharaj celebrating the birthday? Did you ever hear Rama and Ramayana of Valmiki celebrating the birthday? Do you, do you have any such mention? 24,000 verses are there. In one verse he could have said, that uh, every Navami, the Dasharatha Maharaja used to celebrate the birthday of Rama very beautifully. One verse should have been there, it is not there. Therefore, it is a recent phenomenon, okay? It is not original. It is, it is a, maybe it came from West, I don't know. I don't know, I am not blaming the West. But uh, maybe it might have come from the West, and uh, now it has become universal. There are no boundaries like that. But uh, I said West because I am sitting in the West, please don't mind. I said West because in India we ape the West. We don't learn from the West. 
invest. They are very social people, they pay their taxes and all that properly. And we don't uh, learn from them. We avoid, we evade taxes all the time. In India, people don't pay tax. You will be surprised to know that uh, only 7% of the population pays taxes. That is a very small number. And out of that 7%, Government employees constitute a big chunk and uh, they, they, they pay their taxes not willingly. The tax is collected at the source. Earlier it used to be called TDS, tax deduction at the source. Yes, by giving the check, paycheck, they, they deduct, deduct the charge, the tax and give the paycheck. Now they are not calling it deduction. That doesn't sound nice. Therefore, they are calling it TCS, tax collection at the source. That is the new name. Uh, so, they don't pay taxes. Uh, so, very interesting. They just don't pay taxes. Uh, somehow or the other, they manage to evade the taxes. In Israel, 50% of the population pays taxes. Highest number it is. Because in a family one person pays taxes generally, in spite of that, in Israel, 50% of the population pays taxes. In India, just 7%. So Vivekananda so said we should learn some good things from the West. In West they pay taxes well. Here they pay taxes. Eh? Whereas in India we don't pay taxes. We can learn that. But we ape the West. Birthday party dance, that we learn, that we ape. Dance is what we have. We need not dance. Why should we dance? Because in the West they dance, therefore we also started dancing. I have digressed there. So the point is, uh, what is this egotistic self? It is a bundle of memories. And the memories begin with the birth. That is when I entered, but digressed. We were unnecessary digression, but anyway I have back to the point. So beginning with birth, the person is now, this is what I call spindle. So birth, then I have grown up in the village. So village. You know what kind of distortion it creates? Whatever little charity I want to do, I will do it in my village only. That is where it goes. So you are in a say, you are on the moon. Suppose you built a house on the moon and made well in the, on the moon, made a lot of money. But still, you want to do, you can do charity on the moon. There are other people on the moon. A colony is there and some poor people also could be there. You can do charity there, no? You don't want to do charity where you live. You want to do charity in the village you are born. Who is born in the village? They are the children. Chita or person? Person. You see, in how many ways that spindle going round and round and round, it uh, strengthens the person. And when that person will dissolve, it will never dissolve. Then the childhood, high school, college, university. Then, uh, so you are sure that you are born to a set of parents at a given place and at a given time. That is the person. These things are fixed. To a set of parents I was born. Okay, then you become Matru Deva Bhava, Pitru Deva Bhava. No, that can wait. At a given place, and at a given time, I was born. Now, this uh, thinking that I was born to a set of parents at a given place and a given time. So, why don't you see what Shankara is saying? Name Mata, Name Pita, Name Janma, Na Janma Murtyu. He is not saying that. So he is making the vision very clear. He is not a hiding or he is not a ambivalent. He is saying unequivocally that there is no father, there is no mother. It is not about Matru Deva Bhava thinker. It is not about that. It is about myself. The immortal, the birthless. 
chit is never born, it is only the body. You are taking the quality of the body upon yourself. So this way, this bundle of memories, birth, etc. Then the marriage. So marriage, it happened, it's okay. Young people, they do get married because there is an attraction between, it's a biological opposites are there. And then there is a natural attraction between the biological opposites and therefore the right thing is to get married. It's a social custom and also it is a religious custom and it's a family custom. So it happened. But you allow that thing that happened long back to fix a, fix a, a personality for you. The person is one more spindle. Then children, I'm the father of one child, another child. Then I brought up the children, made them uh, very prosperous in the world. The spindle is going on, and did you notice that? This is how the person is created. Now you have to recognize that the person that you imagine yourself to be is merely a bundle of memories and habits. Habits also. Habits means not physical habits, like coffee tea, that is not the habit that we are talking about. Like a habit of uh, belonging to a religion. What is a religion? What is a religion? You subscribe to your religion and you take yourself to be a religionist and you identify, you define yourself in terms of the religion. I belong to this religion. I am a Vaishnava, right? I am a Shay, right? Like that, or I am a Christian. Like that, you define yourself, make it a part of the personality that's spindled. What is the religion after all? Is it not a habit of thinking? You see, you think is the same thing again and again and again and that becomes a habit and that is the religion. Therefore, these memories and habits put together, they prepare this false entity called the egotistic person and you identify with it. So you have to understand that. So you have to move from the unreal personality to your true nature, this the chief awareness. You have to move, you have to make that move. And when you make that move, you will realize yourself as uh, the, the uh, chief, that is your swarupam, that you will realize. You say the person that you take yourself to be, and that awareness Jnana-vajjita, ajnana-hena-chita, jnana, that knowing element in the person. There is a, a, a gulf between the two. Okay? And this gulf you have to cross. And how to cross? Kimusvaru-pamiti, atma-darshyane. You have to investigate and you have to find out your true nature. That is how you have to cross that gulf between eh? that gulf of the dark and also become chasm. You know, there is chasm. Uh, you can you have to cross that chasm between the person that you believe yourself to be, which is merely a bundle of memories and habits, and also under the pure awareness, the chitta. This uh, gulf between the two you have to cross. It is not difficult to cross. So, you will easily cross, across that gulf. Only you have to master the, the, uh, the state of awareness that you have to master. Like, um, something is there. I am aware of that. And I do not project any like or dislike. Because in projecting the like or dislike, you have brought in the person to the form. Did the person uh, associated with the likes and dislikes, which are part of the memory part. You like or dislike based on the memory of the past experience. Therefore, in projecting the like or dislike, did the person which is coming to the form. So you master that uh, state of awareness to such a point that you are aware of what is without projecting like or dislike. Okay? That is Vedanta. Suppose you start 
how to manage the likes and dislikes. How to start that way? How to start that way? That means what? You want to keep them. You want to keep them. Like a manager keeps all things around him and he manages them. Like that is the attachment and aversion, or the name like self, dislikes, whatever you are, and pressure. You want to keep them. And otherwise you want to manage them properly. Like it is like you have a fund, you want to invest in securities. And now you have to manage those securities cleverly. Right? That is the job. So now you have to manage your desires and fears. It is not about rising above the desires and fears, but it is about keeping them and managing them properly. Let your fear be not known, not, let your fear be not known to the other person, because he may exploit. So keep the fear carefully hidden. The desire that you employ you, be very clever about it. See your finances, etc. If the finances permit, go ahead and fulfill the desire, otherwise you postpone it. So this is the management. That, that doesn't help you to cross that gulf. So people have to understand. Therefore now you have to bridge the gulf between the person and the awareness pure, the chit. That you have to do. So it means instead of projecting the likes and dislikes, the desires and fears and the idiosyncrasies of the person all the time, thereby uh, giving extra strength to that person. Because it is the person who suffers, which suffers rather. And thus suffering the samsara. So you have to put an end to that habit. And you have to cultivate uh, the art of mastering the awareness. Means, in every given situation, you are aware. Somebody is praising you, you are playing, create this and that. You are aware. Somebody is censoring you, you are aware. You are not excited when somebody praises you, you do not react or become angry or shock back when somebody censures you, so you are just aware in both contexts. When there is a pleasurable event, you are aware. More often than not, there are many painful events in life. And uh, some of these pains have no solution also. They remain with us. Till the last breath, they will be there. And some of the pains are like that. Therefore, instead of uh, strengthening the person based on the pain, you are aware of the pain. You have to master the art of awareness. You have to be aware. This is how you have to carry forward that investigation. Kim's Gauru Kavithi Atma Darshane. What is that? Then man, another way is also there. Who am I? That is the question, Ramahashi question. So the answer to the question, who am I? Is only I am. That is the answer. There is no other answer. That is how you can apply that question and uh, come out with the answer to that question as I am and then understand that I am is prior to thought. You have to understand that. You go inside, thought comes later. First is I am. Earlier I have moved from body to the awareness. Now I am moving in the other direction. So begin with the I am. Okay, who am I? That is one kind of beginning, starting from body, to move forward and forward, and deeper and deeper, and arrive at the pure chitya. Ah. Now you have to start with the chitya. It reflects in the body, in the body mind, or in this upadhi as I am. That is how it is reflecting. So, the chitta, the awareness of Sojut, which is the Brahma, is very much abiding here, is very much available for you to recognize here, the Rupa, very close to you. You can recognize it here and right now. So, how to go about it? So, how is it reflecting here? You see that. 
It is like the sun is reflecting in the mirror of your room. There is a mirror in the room and the sun is reflecting in that mirror. Now you can look at the reflection. Okay? Don't look at the other objects that shine in the make of that reflection. Just look at the reflection. And that will uh, help you. So now you want to know the source of this reflection. So then what you do? You turn the mirror towards the sun. Then the reflection vanishes. There is only sun. Some example. Okay? Therefore, you look at this reflection of the chitta in the heart. That is I am. Now you understand this I am is the door to the reality. Because I am, you have to understand the I am properly. You have to, you have to look at the I am or, or, or investigate the I am properly. I am is prayer to thought. First thought, first I am, then only thought. So thought is creates a person. Person is the ego, which is also a thought. Therefore I am is prayer to the person. And I am is prayer to an emotion. Suppose there is an emotion, which is either the attachment or aversion. Like that is like whatever, emotions are emotions. So there is an emotion. But you have to understand that I am is prayer to the emotion. You have to understand that. Then instead of getting submerged in the emotion, getting carried away by the emotion, emotion will take away the people. People are carried away by the emotions. Hmm? They are emotionally attached to the Guru Mahārāj. Look at that. Hmm? That emotional attachment, eh? it, is, it creates an emotional dependence, otherwise called psychological dependence. So therefore, emotion, it is not, the point is whether it is not, whether it is good or bad, that is not the point. Good or bad is not the point. What is good in emotion? Emotion and sentiment, what is good in it? They are all imaginations of the mind only, projections of the mind. Therefore, the point is not whether it is good or bad. The point is I am prior to emotion. Therefore, jealous, suppose you see jealousy. I am prior to this jealousy. Jealousy you notice. You get it. You notice it. Means you look at somebody and compare and become jealous. Immediately you become alert and tell yourself I am prior to this emotion. Sometimes there can be, say, some good emotion, like a, you are kind to somebody. So that emotion is kind, that brings a sense of kindness, you become kind. And then out of that kindness you may do some good job also, some help also you may give. But then, uh, that kindness, you should not create a personality out of it. That is what the philanthropists of the charitable people of the world do. Many times I tell people, when you give a donation, forget it. Don't remember that you have given a donation. Yeah? This habit of uh, giving some donation and then wait for three months or six months. When you go to India, check whether this donation is used there properly or not. Go and uh, take account of that donation. This is madness. You are creating a person out of that charity. Charity is a good thing. It came out of some kindness. Somebody has invoked uh, the spirit of kindness in you and out of that uh, emotion, which is a nice emotion, you give some charity. Great. But then uh, having given a charity, you don't know how to forget it. You don't know how to put it aside. It gets imprinted in the mind because you have identified with it and you have now become a charitable person. Therefore, a philanthropist or a charitable person is not a realized person. He is still a person only, ignorant. That's why our focus should not be on philanthropy, charity, our focus should not be on that. 
was to you to make so much money in the first class. <laughs> Who asked you to collect all that money in the first place? You can avoid that, you know. You are greedy first. And make a lot more than in India. They take bribes and all that. They amass wealth enough for six generations. That is the greed. And now they become charitable. What is the charity? Make Gold Kavacham armor for the Venkateshwara. Why the Lord Venkateshwara is why you have to make gold Kavacham to Venkateshwara. Venkateshwara cannot take care of himself or not. You have to make things for Venkateshwara. Your father is poor, do something to him. Your mother is suffering, do something to her. Or your neighbor is uh, having a, some difficulty of finance, help him. No, no, I want to get uh, some gold kavachim to walk in What is that? So this kind of a misguided uh, approach will not help at all. Because you have to cross the chasa between the person and the awareness. It is here now day, and it is now you have to cross it. It is not tomorrow, it is not day after tomorrow. It is all very simple. Therefore, uh, I am prior to an emotion. Even when the emotion is a good emotion, I am prior to that emotion. Don't identify with the emotion. Suppose you, I, uh, I do some service to parent. Out of the spirit of devotion to the parent, I do some service to the parent. Leave it at that. Leave it at that. Don't expect some acknowledgement. The parent should bless. Blessing is okay. The parent should be nice to you. And uh, so that kind of uh, the parent even may want to reciprocate. Well, the parent is holding on to some property. So you expect uh, some good treatment and sharing of that property. All this. So it looks like very charitable, but it, uh, it is very selfish also at the same time. And uh, therefore, uh, any emotion, keep it a good emotion, keep it, you need not keep anything, you just be aware, master the art of awareness, be aware of the emotion and understand clearly, tell yourself, I am prior to the emotion. You also tell to yourself, I am prior to the concepts. You can easily say that. Suppose you are worshipping God Shiva, suppose. When did you start worshipping God Shiva? The first moment after birth you started worshipping God Shiva? No. When did you start? Maybe I started worshipping God Shiva at the age of eight or nine. Why did I do that? Because my parents are worshipping Shiva, therefore I started worshipping Shiva. Now what is this Shiva that I am worshipping? Is it not a concept? Borrowed from the parents? Now, the point is whether it is good or bad, that is not the point. The point the worship is good only. That is not the point. The point is, I am prior to the concept. So, therefore, the, the, the epithet or the, the objective, I am a Shaivarite. I am a Shivabhatta. You see this eh, among the people. So, they ask, so Swamiji, you are a Shiva Bhakta, Kama Bhakta. So, and then they give title also. Suppose I am teaching Ramayana, he must be Rama Bhakta. Suppose I am chanting Rudra, he must be Shiva Bhakta. So, this is Shiva Bhakti or any Bhakti for that matter. It is virtually in the form of some ritual only. Okay. What is going on inside God knows. And uh, so, this concept, which is religion is a concept, it is a habit of thinking that uh, and I am prior to the particular habit of thinking. So you rise above all these things that you have loaded into your personality. You rise above all that. See yourself 
as I am prior to all this, then I am, uh, I am prior to um, a name, a speech, Chakshusha Shakshuva. I am for eyesight and I am. I am prior to eyesight. I am prior to the speech. I am prior to the faculty of hearing. And then perception, which is first. I am a perception. I am prior to perception. I am prior to inference. And then Shuddha Pramana. I am prior to Shuddha Pramana also. You should know that. Shankara said in a sentence that uh, you are there first, then only Shuddha Pramana. So, Atmanam, Pramatam, Vijnaya, Pramatuhu, Pramimitsoho, Pramanam Veshana Bhavati. This is Gita, second chapter, Apramanisya, Anashana Apramanisya. I have put in my words. If you read that statement, most of it is just the way I have said it. You look for a pramana because you want to measure something. A pramana is a measurement. You want to measure something. It is like I wanted to purchase a box for travel. And what these airline people put all kinds of restrictions because they carry on back there, they have some measurements. So, therefore, what I have done, I looked for a tape and got it and put it in the pocket and went to the Walmart. This is called Pramana. That is how Pramana operates. Shankara called it Pramana Anveshana. I was looking for a tape. So, you are looking for a little Chaksha Ramana to measure whatever. So, why do you want to measure? Because you want to measure. Maybe it's so. You want to measure. So, no, I want to know. Knowing is measuring. Don't you know that? Eh? I know the right bag to be purchased. Is it not measuring? I take the tape and measure and ah, this is the right bag. Is it knowing or measuring? It is same. All the laws of physics, are the measurements or are they knowledge? Same or not? They are knowledge and they are measurements. Somebody measured the velocity of light. Pope called measured the velocity of light. And he declared that this is the velocity of light. Is it measurement or is it knowledge? It is the same. It is, it is both. It is knowledge which is in the form of measurement. That is what Shankara says. Therefore, all Pramana is not first. I am first. First I am. Then Pramana and I want to worship something. Or I want to know something, measure or no. I want to know man mane, in Sanskrit man mane, to measure. And so mana, pramana, prai upasarka. And uh, so whenever when the upasarka pra comes, so the na becomes a nana. So, therefore, uh, uh, so I want to know, it means measure. And therefore I am looking for a pramana. So which is first now, pramana or I am? I am first. Pramana Veshna Bhavati. First, you are there, then only they will be looking for a Pramana. Therefore, I am. Prayer to uh, perception, prayer to inference, prayer to Shabda. Veda. Shabda. Veda is the Shabda. Who is prayer? I am prayer. Then only Shabda. That is what Veda is also saying, you know. It's not that I am saying it, dismissing Veda. No, I am saying it. Taking the cue from Veda only. Therefore, then, so you investigate. Kimswarupam. You drop the past. You allow the past to drop. And then ask the question, who am I? There is no answer to that. Except you have to say, I am. Therefore, when you drop the past, then you are left with I am. I am a Sheshaha. You, you drop the past memory and see what remains. I am remains. You are imagining the future, suppose. You are thinking of the future. And really chronological, you don't mind, you can do that. But some psychological future, you are imagining. Old people do that a lot. Because they think they were born and now death is nearing and they are going to die. 
Therefore, how long will I live? How, what kind of death I will face? This is what they think. And they suffer. Which will be the right place to die? What does it matter? You don't die anywhere. Huh? It doesn't matter whether you die in Pennsylvania or you die in Bombay. What does it matter? No, no, where should I die? Should I die in Pennsylvania or should I die in Bombay? And they, they will be thinking all the time this way. All the future. About future. All kinds of imaginations will be coming out. So now what you do is drop the future. Behave as if you don't have a future. Declare to yourself, I don't have a future. Naveh bhutam na bhavishyate. Shankara said in some place. Bhavyam bhavat bhutam, nothing is there for me. I am timeless. Suppose you drop the imagination of the future, then uh, who am I now? The one who doesn't have the future, who is that one that doesn't have a future? You understand the expression correctly, not having the future. Not having the future means some career is stuck, not like that. I don't have a future. People ask me, Yes, Swami, what is your future? I don't have a future. I have only present. I don't have a future. And I don't have a past also. Then what remains? I am remains. This is how you do Kims for Upam Iti Atmadarshane. I am just explaining the problem. Two ways I have presented before you. I would like to examine it one more way. Because that is the ultimate reality. Atmadarshanam, the ultimate reality. That is the Brahman. You see, <coughs> you, examine, you understand this, you examine this. All that is cognized with the five senses is illumined by that inner chitta. You, you understand that? Chikshusha, chikshusha, shrotrasya, shrotra. All that you organize with the five senses is illumined really by that inner chitta. And all that the mind infers, conceives, etc. is illumined by that inner chitta. You have to think on those lines. And then uh, this body-mind, uh, you, you are holding on to it, very strongly to this body-mind. You need not hold on to it so strongly. You should learn to rise above the body-mind. But whatever, whatever, whatever be the case, this body-mind, how, do, how does it come into existence? Because it is illumined, therefore the body-mind is because it is illumined. It is known. And how do you know the body-mind? Because of that inner chit. So this is how you have to understand that all the world that I cognize through the senses, you first through the mind, and then emotions, etc., sentiments and all that which are projected by the mind, and the whole intellect, which is the accumulation of knowledge by the intellect, all these things are illumined by that inner sheet. Okay? That is how they are illumined. So, there is a small uh, anecdote. Sri Krishna, uh, boy Krishna, these are all stories which have some meaning. If there is no meaning, you can dismiss those stories. They have no value. The boy Krishna asked the mother in Shoda, give me some sweet, alpha, whatever. She said, uh, Right, it is daytime, evening fine, still sun is shining. This is not the time for eating food. You wait. That is what she told her. So, till what should I wait? He asked her. Till uh, the night fall, you have to wait. Till the night comes, you have to wait. Then he asks her, how to recognize this night? What are the characteristics of the night? That is what he asks. She tells her, night is darkness, and when darkness comes, I will give you the food. Then he says, he closes the eyes and says, now the darkness has come, give me the food. That is the anecdote. That means what? 
the darkness of the light, the day, the night, everything depends upon you. That is what Sri Krishna is saying. Depend, doesn't depend upon the altar. Depends upon you. You close the eyes, then it is darkness. You open the eyes, even if it is darkness outside, it is all light. You are the source, that illumination, you are. And uh, you are aware of the time also. Therefore you are you are the witness of the time also. Therefore you are the timeless chit. That is what you are. So you have to understand. Because there is the timeless chit in the background of you, all this is shining. Otherwise, all this will remain in utter darkness, space also. Therefore, the <coughs> so now what you do is you consider the three states: the waking, the dream, and the slumber, deep sleep. These are three states you consider. Now you examine. You notice this when one state is going on, the other state is absent. Other two states are absent. When there is Jankarata, there are no other two. Similarly, only one state is going on at any given time. And the other two are absent. Means every state, it, uh, it, uh, it uh, negates the other two states. Jagrat means the negation of deep sleep and the dream state, like that. But in dream you are not aware of the other two states. In deep sleep you are not aware of the other two states. But in waking you are aware of the other two states. That is why the waking state provides a special opportunity to examine all the three states together. In dream you cannot do that. Because in dream you are not even aware of the other two. Same is the case with the deep sleep. Only in the waking state you are aware of the other two. Therefore, you can examine all the three states in the waking state. Together. Together you can examine. Therefore, what you do is uh, just uh, sit quietly. Okay, sit quietly. And uh, you try to witness all the three states simultaneously by placing them side by side. So the Agnatha, dream and deep sleep. You examine them uh, simultaneously by placing them one after the other in that sequence. Sequence is not very important, but that is how you examine. The Agnatha, dream and the sleep. You examine all the three in the waking state. There is a meditation. What am I? What is my real nature? Because these states are shining entirely because of that inner light. So, the person that you assume yourself to be is there the part of the waking state only. Similarly, there is another person in the dream state. Another person or the same person with a different kind of mentality, whatever. Another person only. In the waking state you are happy, in the dream you are unhappy. That is another person only. And then in the dream, in this deep sleep, no person. Therefore you examine all the three states, side by, put them side by side and examine them. So, therefore when you persist witnessing or examining the three states together, so when you persist with it, gradually you will notice the three states tapering off. They will melt away and the pure awareness, the chit remains. Therefore you will realize that you are not any one of those three states. You are not even a part of any one of those three states. You are the chit which illuminates those three states. That is the meditation you have to do. It is all that you have to do in yourself. Take the cue from the scripture and from the speaker, but you have to do this yourself. Uh, so once again I say it, when uh, you examine the three states, putting them side by side and watch them, 
out of the sequence and the your jagannam then slowly they taper off in the true self emergence and in the in the very very examining the three states they are different but as they as they taper off in the true self emergence it is monolithic it is uniform or the homogeneous pure awareness it is the differentiations that you find in the states they they pertain to the states only they are not connected to the pure light of awareness and it is a pure mass of awareness and it is entirely homogeneous without any differentiations in it without any divisions in it it is one without a second and therefore it is the ultimate reality of all the three states what is the reality of the jagrat the chit the reality of the dream the chit the reality of the deep sleep the chit it is the reality of all they are not real in themselves their reality is the inner light of awareness only and therefore that is how you realize yourself kim swarupam iti atma darshane when that atma darshanam happens then what happens so then what happens is avyaya abhava apurna chit sukham that is what you mean so you see the atma darshanam we are saying you know atma darshanam the shadow is knowledge you can say like that realization of knowledge then only they use the word knowledge self knowledge nothing wrong in it so what they are what you have to understand is uh, the self knowledge is not the is not uh, really speaking it is not a knowledge that we normally understand so you see what is the knowledge that you understand you are the knower and that is the known and there is a means of knowing and that is how knowledge is created knowledge happens created or happens it is synthesized of course but you say it happens and then it is acquired that is how you acquire knowledge atmajnanam is not that kind of knowledge at all in fact if we are if i have to say and bluntly the self knowledge is not a knowledge at all because uh, knowledge implies a division bhedam yatu mastikim antaram so is there a division in order to know yatu antaram astikim that is the question he is asking means if it is to be known there must be division There is no division. Therefore, there is no knowing of the Atma. You don't know the Atma; just be the Atma. Therefore, really speaking, it is not a knowledge. Self-knowledge is not a truly a knowledge, because when you take self-knowledge as a knowledge, then you start searching for it. But the true Atma Darshanam. you don't get it by searching so how do you do you go on jai vedanta course that is how the search begins and you go to your syllabus maya that is how the search continues and then you go after the gurus one guru after the other guru after the other guru and comparing gurus and all that you start this guru thing that is part of the search and then you shift to places from one place to another so search of search of atmajnana so instead of staying in pennsylvania you go to rishikesh search of atmajnana therefore this is how you do and then the time also searching in one's time therefore now i start the search and by the time i retire i will get it so this whole samsara uh, has come to it whole division not samsara division has come to it therefore uh, you do not gain it is not a knowledge and you don't get it by looking everywhere by searching it here and there so you don't find it in space now if we live in kashi somebody started this 
Nobody started this. In India we will start all kinds of things. So somebody goes to Yadagiri to visit God, to see God, Darishana. And then the priest tells, if you see God and go away, nothing happens. You see God and stay here at least one night. Then your desire will be fulfilled. That is what he says. And there is a, a, a lodging by the side. And per night they charge an exorbitant price of 3000 rupees. Just to sleep there, they charge 1000 rupees. Food you have to purchase your own food. And somebody runs that lodging and it is always full. And the priest and the large maker, lodging person, they, they are together. So somebody starts like this. Just one example I gave you. In Kashi, if you die, or if you live in Kashi, you will get moksha. Therefore, people who have studied Vedanta, they go to Kashi. And they start living there. And they don't improve their food habits and all that. They become sick also. In Kashi they become sick. And therefore in Kashi they go to a corporate hospital. Tell you what you do in Kashi. You are in Kashi. Now you take Ganga and keep quiet. Aushadhan Jyana we told him. Vaidyona Arayana Harki. Keep quiet. No. You go to a corporate hospital in Kashi. If you have to go to a corporate hospital, why should you go to Kashi in the first place? You stay where you are. Therefore, uh, searching for the truth in space and searching for the truth in time. In time means, now you join uh, study Vedanta, the Selvas Maya. And by the time six semesters or eight semesters are over, you will get, likely to get more moksha or jnana. Moksha or some jnana you will get. You see, you should understand, uh, knowledge is uh, but a memory. That is only memory. Like Panini knowledge you have. What is that? That is memory only. Eh? So, and it's a mental habit. Memory means a mental habit, a pattern of thought. That cannot be Atma. That cannot be the Chit. Therefore, uh, you, you see, to know Atma is only one way. That is, to be Atma. Okay? To be Atma. And uh, why should I be myself? Atma is myself. Why should I be myself? Why do you perform a ritual? You have a motivation. There is a motive. Why do you get married? There is a motive. Why do you do charity? There is a motive. Some motive is there. Right? No, no, motive is selfless charity. Okay, why do you do selfless charity? There must be some motive. Because uh, selfish charity means for the sake of punyam if I do charity, uh, so the result will be less. But if I do without for keeping the punyam aside, I will get a higher thing. There is some kind of a motive there. It's okay, I am just saying. So, you are looking always for a motive to do anything. Okay? But there is one thing where there can be no motive, there should be no motive, but should be entirely motiveless, and that is be yourself. What should be the motive to be yourself? You don't need a motive to be yourself. You be yourself because that is the most natural thing. Therefore, Kim Swarupa Mityatva Darshana doesn't need a motive. Moksha is not a motive. Moksha is a freedom from bondage. It is a very negative thing it is. Artha is a positive motive. Kama is a positive motive. Dharma is a positive motive. You get Punya and go to heaven. Whereas Moksha is a negative thing it is. It is cessation of all motive. Liberation is a freedom from every single motive, including the motive of self-knowledge. So that is how you have to rise to the self-knowledge. That is how the Atma Darshan, so you have to pursue. Kim Swarupamati, Atma Darshan. Then one more thing. 
your uh, aspiration, you may call it desire also, nothing wrong, jignasa, your desire to discover the self, atma darshana, will be surely fulfilled. No doubt about it. But, there is a but, you know, in the meanwhile, you should not seek other things. That is the problem. Because, uh, suppose you seek heaven, then you become the person who is suffering here. Therefore, he wants to go to heaven. Why everybody wants to go to heaven? Because he is the person suffering here. So, in seeking heaven, you become the person suffering here. As the person suffering here, you have already slipped from the Chaitanya to the level of her, the false ego. Therefore, how can there be uh, Atma Darshan? Therefore, if you want something else in the meanwhile, you will not, uh, there is no question of uh, fulfilling the desire to realize the Self. That won't be fulfilled. That's why it is said that you become desireless. When you become desireless, then even the motive to know Atma will also be drop away. Because uh, what can be the motive to be myself? There is no motive. That even the motive of moksha should drop. That is what Sri Krishna says in Gita. Siddhya Siddhyo Samo Bhutva Samatvan Yoga Ushyate. There if you see the Bhashya, Shankara says, even the motive of moksha should be dropped. Then you are in the Atma. You are the Atma. Therefore, uh, that's why I insist that you seek the truth, be honest about it. By seeking the truth, you cannot run after the untruth at the same time. You cannot contradict yourself in so many ways, so many ways, and at the same time seek the truth. You must be honest with yourself and want nothing else. Then so then should I stop working? Who told that? You need not stop working. You need not move anywhere. A thousand times you told. You need not move anywhere in space. You don't wait for anything in time. You can't you allow you are not doing anything. You are not the karta. Therefore you allow the natural thing to happen naturally. Now you may ask the question, why should the natural thing happen naturally? If I have to get Atma Darshanam, why should the natural thing happen naturally? Why that condition also? Okay, if the natural thing should not happen naturally, then what should happen? The unnatural thing should happen. Why the unnatural thing happens? Because as the ego, you put your finger there, that's why the unnatural thing happens. Therefore, when the natural thing is happening naturally, allow the word allow is said, that means don't interfere. You wake up, you feel like brushing your teeth, don't interfere. No, today I will not brush my teeth. <laughs> that is it. People of schizophrenia, they don't brush their teeth. Because that is the disease. Now you can do anything to a person except to brushing the teeth. A person was asked, hey, what are you doing? I am brushing the teeth of my horse. <laughs> that is the reply he gave. So brushing the teeth for the other guy is a very tough job. That's why if you visit a schizophrenic place, what we call Pichasvatri in Tirumu, so you find men and women whose teeth are not clean. They don't brush them properly. And the people who work there and the relatives who are taking care of these poor people, they push them, come on, go, wash, brush. They give brush, they give brush, everything. But they don't do it. So, so in the name of Atma Jnana, you don't want to allow the natural thing to happen naturally. What should you do? You should allow the natural thing to happen naturally. Therefore, suppose you are doing a job. Do your duty. You are taking salary. Do your duty. And use that money for the welfare of the family and let it be used for a meaningful purpose. 
And if it is charity, do charity without any motive. And you should, don't even think that you are doing charity. Who are you to do the charity? It is Ishwara's wealth. Like that you think. Therefore, you need not change the state of life. You can remain the family person. You can continue to be whatever you are. You can continue to do the job that you are doing and without desiring anything. You do the duty without desire. That is karmanyaya vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana. That is what it is. That is the basic thing it is. And uh, you serve your parents without any desire. You serve your spouse and children without any return, uh, expectation of any return. Be desireless and allow the natural thing to happen naturally. The son has passed uh, the college, uh, school. Now the natural thing is help him to go to the university. And he passes university and he wants to go to a job. Allow him. Let him go to the job. He, want, he sees a girl and he wants to marry the girl. Bless. No, I don't want that girl to be married. I want another girl I have fixed it. There is some sorry. This is not the way to pursue Atman Jnana. While pursuing Atman Jnana, you, you, that is the only aspiration you have. And you do not pursue no, nothing else. You don't want anything else. And you allow the natural thing to happen naturally. But if you are, uh, in the meantime, you want many other things and are engaged in their pursuit, your main pursuit will be delayed. Till you grow wiser. You have to come to a point. You have to gain, become wiser and have to come to a point where except allowing the natural thing to happen naturally, you are not seeking anything. You have to come to the point. You are not pursuing any other thing. You are interested in only Atma that is what you have to do. Therefore, otherwise what happens, you know, you get a torn between contradictory urges. So that is how, what we see in the world. They are caught between contradictory urges. They want to Vedanta, they want to help from knowledge, and they want a few other things at the same time. Now, that is not how you pursue it. That is not how you do it. Therefore, go with them. Without swerving this way, that way. Just to go with them. Don't look outward. When you do the duty with the devotion, you are not looking outward. It is karma samadhi. When you are working, you are doing your duty and looking for the phala. That is outward looking. Therefore, this is how you have to go with them. So, now you have to understand where are these pursuits Desires and fears. They are not in you. They are in the mind only. They do not belong to you. They belong to the fictitious person. And therefore, that is how, once you realize that, they are in the mind. That's why Sri Krishna says, Rajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan Partha Bhagavata. He says that. It is not even difficult to give them up. Because they are in the mind and not in you. So, once uh, you reach that point, uh, uh, you will realize yourself, uh, yourself. And there are no conditions to fulfill. These are not conditions. This is only, you do not uh, allow yourself to be taught uh, between contradictory or just, that is all. There are no other conditions to fulfill. So there is nothing to be done. Paratmanya. No, no, duty. Duty is the natural thing. You don't do it. It happens. And there is nothing to be given up. That's why a true sannyasi never claims that he has given up. And never claims that he is a sannyasi also. He just remains very normal. Very normal. Nothing special. Because uh, for gaining the self, there is nothing to be given up. The person is fictitious, it is false. What is there to give up? You have to rise above only. There is nothing like giving up. You rise above, that's all. Therefore, uh, just to remember, whatever you perceive is not you, and not yours. 
you are the light behind the perception. You are I am, you are I am before the perception, prior to the perception. Remember the word prayer. Prayer is a meditation word. I am prayer to the mind. You tell that to yourself. You feel a likeness in you. Because all sufferings, all the desires, etc. are in the mind. And uh, I am prayer to the mind. You tell yourself you are free. You raise above the body mind immediately by telling yourself I am prayer to the mind. That's a good meditation also. So these are some of the ideas about Atma Darshanam. Kings for Upamiti Atma Darshanam. That I have finished. Now what is Atma? You remain as yourself. And what is Atma? What is that yourself? You remain as yourself. It is a Chita Sukham. What kind of Chita Abhava? Apurna Chita Sukham. That line we will do in the next class. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti Shanti Om Shanti Shanti